And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to Raider Arena, where we are set for another doubleheader of Raider basketball action. Men's and women's teams both set to square off with the Pirates of Pensacola State College. My name is Rob Brown. On your play-by-play -play this evening, sitting to my immediate right, your Cullen commentary for the night, Mr. Jeff McDonald and Jay Mack, a team that we've seen the ladies square off with once already. Had themselves a pretty decent game, a little bit different this evening. Pensacola lacking a handful of players. The roster a little depleted due to injury, so they're only going to have seven or eight players to trot out this evening. That may give an advantage to Northwest Florida State tonight. No, absolutely, and something that we know all too well about our Lady Raiders is that we are pretty deep, so I think you're going to see us get out and try to run them, try to wear them out real quick. <clears throat> that way we can kind of drop back into a zone, relax a little bit, but I see this is probably going to be a long night for Pensacola State College. It's tough being shorthanded against one of the top teams in the country. No doubt about it. We saw last time these two teams got together that Talent-wise, Northwest Florida State College is just the more talented basketball team, and tonight they got a little bit different issue, and the Pirates do, in that they've got to play a team that's more talented and without some of their better players. In fact, their two tallest players both off the roster this evening. So, looks like for Northwest Florida State, Lady Raiders will come into this thing with a bit of an advantage both on the glass and overall, but we also know what happens. We've seen this team get overconfident here and there and yeah. end up giving away some leads they shouldn't be giving away. Yeah, you just mentioned it, though, missing that size inside. I mean, it's probably going to be a big night for uh, 24, Jaden McCoy, and uh, number three, Ala Trossi for the Lady Raiders. Get it inside to them early and often. It's like we always say, if we can get Etchie going outside and we can also get Georgia Dale going outside, it'll be a long night for Pensacola State College. And, you know, as we're, I brought up that name, Georgia Gale, and uh, as we were getting here this evening, <laughs> We caught a little news from one of the coaches that uh, Georgia's mother, uh, Miss Lorraine Gale, was uh, watching the broadcast. And Miss Gale, I hope you're listening right now. I hope you're watching. And uh, we were reading off the little list of the things that we'll, we we got. CC Mayo will feature tonight, but last uh, Wednesday night we featured Georgia, kind of just with some background information and some funny little tidbits. And one of the things that they were asking, uh, what was it exactly there, Big Rob? Uh, well, they mentioned that Georgia Gale's favorite sport outside of basketball is show jumping, to which Jeff McDonald called it, quote, something they must <laughs> do over in Great Britain, end quote. Yes. Uh, what yours truly knew was uh, oh, the yeah. horses. He, he knew. So to Miss Lorraine, I apologize for my cohort's <laughs> behavior, and we will get that corrected for you. All right, we are underway here in Niceville, Florida. Again, Rob Brown, Jeff McDonald with you on the call for both the men's and women's Northwest Florida State College Raider basketball games. But let it be known, Miss Gale, we love your daughter. She's an amazing ball player. We're fortunate to have her. Absolutely, and an absolute golden girl. She came over here before the game and wanted us to correct her. was very polite about it, so uh, no, no worries there at all. Speaking of Georgia Gale, there she is with the basketball up on top, waiting for our Trossi to come across and flash up to the top of the key. Skips over to Shania Mertens. Mertens, we talked to with the coach, Coach Bart Walker, after that last game as Mertens can't get the layup to go. We talked with Coach Walker during the last game, and remember, three different times Shania Mertens had to leave the floor in that last game, Jeff. All three were cramps, according to Coach Bart Walker. He said that all three times is the layup right under the basket won't go for Zarina Walker. He said just the calf cramps in both calves and the thigh cramp kept her on the bench for the end of that game. So we'll see if Shania gets a little more fluid and a little more potassium working for this game. Yeah, hopefully she's had plenty of Gatorade and bananas today. That basket good for Sade Mobley, a 5'7 sophomore guard out of Pensacola, Florida, drives right to the basket, goes up over Leandra Etchie, and the first points belong to the Pirates. We talked about the last game, Jeff. It kind of felt like the girls came out just a little bit flat. We're only about a minute and a half into this one, but almost a similar to feel, and that long jumper is good for Shania Mirtens. That may change the momentum just a little bit, but just felt a little flat to start the game with a couple of missed layups underneath. We'll see if they can pick it up. Yeah, well, here we go. This certainly helps. Some turnovers off the press. Try to maybe I don't know if we got a foul on that one. No foul. No foul called underneath. That one's going to go with uh, some good defense to Kaya Burnett, number 23, who went square up with Etchy. Etchy tried to go through her and draw the foul, but knocked out of bounds instead. So we'll rebound, excuse me, inbound under the basket. 
Inside to Jaden McCoy, there's Etchie out in the wing. Up to Trossi at the high elbow. Trossi dribbles down the line, the little spin, and the yeah. jumper's good off the glass. That should be all night right there. Get it down to Trossi and McCoy and just let them work. Tallest player on the floor this evening for the Pirates is going to be Zamaria Polk, a 6'3 freshman from Detroit. You'll see her get a lot of work, but that is the only plus six footer on the roster available this evening for the Pirates. Yeah, nice block there by Etchi, playing some great defense so far. That press has really got Pensacola State College rattled. A couple turnovers off the press, and uh, now another bucket from Chassi. Alatrasi battles her way down to the block and gets a little right-handed knock off the glass. Yeah, it's going to be tough stopping her down there tonight. She struggled a little bit from the four in the last game as that jumper is good from Anita Payne. She struggled a little bit to Alatrasi from close range last week. Looks like she may have put a little extra practice time in on the short-range jumpers. This time she's two for two from the block as that, guard, that foul is going to be called against Kaya Burnett up near half court. Yeah, so far so good tonight for Iowa Trossi. We just need to keep pounding it inside to, to Trossi and McCoy and, and uh, just keep beating it like a dead drum and then maybe open things up outside for Georgia Gale, Etchie and Mertens. And there we go. There's Georgia Gale for a three. The show jumping extraordinaire putting on a show from behind the arc last game and she'll try to continue that this game. That's called a segue, Jeff McDonald. That's a show jumper <laughs> right there. <laughs> That layup good, straight to the rack goes Kaya Burnett, unopposed all the way to the glass and gets the layup. It's a 9-6 ball game, Raiders on top. Excuse me for my, my cheesiness, but yes. I've been excusing you for your cheesiness for about 16 years now, Jeff. <laughs> Alatrasi up at the top, Georgia Gale's gonna flash underneath, there's Etchy looking inside, skip oh, pass, pass to Jaden McCoy. Beautiful pass inside to Jaden McCoy for the little layup off the glass. A little light on the press this, this time down. Just denying the inbounder. Pensacola clearly happy to move the It's going to be a travel. She just Looking for the foul on the inside was Zarina Walker instead. Ends up trying to pick up the basketball. Momentum just carried her too far forward. We'll have our first substitution of the matchup. Walker will check off of the floor. On comes number 35, Savannah Walker Laffler, a sophomore from Largo, Florida. She'll be one on one with Jaden McCoy. McCoy looks inside for Trossi. Hands it over to Etchy. Etchy's got Mutants in the corner, but will deliver it through Trossi, who's trying to set McCoy up. There's McCoy at the top of the key. Pass inside to Trossi. Trossi's going to try the jumper. It won't go rebounded by Pensacola. I'm good with that. That's a good shot for Trossi. She'll knock that one down. And a big block there by Shania Mutants over right up against the glass. This new um, Raider mascot is really something else. He is all over the place, doing a great job. 5-12 left in the first quarter of play. CeCe Mayo has checked into the game. She'll replace Alatrasi. Mayo, the spark plug of this team. Every time she comes onto the floor, you can feel the momentum shift, and we'll see if that is true tonight as well. McCoy with the little right-hander at Wonko, but there is CeCe Mayo with a second chance point. She can't get it. McCoy with the first second chance opportunity. Two off offensive rebounds, and McCoy ends up with the layup. Yeah, great rebounding down there on that possession, and great nice left hand soft off the glass from Jaden McCoy. Ball up for grabs, taken back in by Pensacola after the loose ball, waiting on a couple of substitutions are the Pirates with four and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter. Working the ball around the perimeter. There's Walker Lafleur at the top, not a Good range shooter, so she won't take many from there. There's a long jump shot effort. No good. McCoy with the rebound. Gives it up to Etchy. And Etchy's going to go coast to coast. Yeah. Left hand layup is money. I think you can already see just on that possession, you know, we got a timeout now. Looks like by the uh, by Pensacola State College. But you can already see the fatigue that's setting in already just halfway through the first period. Um, it's going to be a long night because the Raiders love to get up and down, and it's going to be tough. 
for uh, Pensacola State College to keep up with the press and then also the transition offense from our Lady Raiders. Yeah, and that's one of the things you have to do. One of the places where we've seen the Lady Raiders struggle. If they get out of control, if that momentum gets out of control, they will give some turnovers against the full press. If you let them come set in their offense, they're a little bit more confident. And that's a choice Pensacola State's going to have to make this evening. Do they want to stay in that full out attack defense, knowing they have limited numbers and limited substitutions, especially knowing that Northwest Florida State tries to draw fouls. So you're looking at getting into foul trouble early. Do you play that press defense, or do you just try to trust your half-court set, recognize that you only have two subs on the evening? Now, Pensacola State College is going to have to back it up, probably run a zone defense. If they can't, they want to preserve their energy, run a zone, stay away from any press. But the, the bad news for them is that our Lady Raiders are going to continue to press most likely and uh, continue to create some fatigue and some issues for Pensacola State College. Little jumper from the corner won't good for Kaya Burnett. McCoy was in between a couple of Pirate rebounders, and it goes to go out of bounds off of Jaden McCoy, so the Pirates will get a second opportunity with a full shot clock. Yeah, they just want to take their time here, run a, a full motion offense, set some screens, some back cuts to the basket, and um, try to preserve as much energy as possible. Long range jumper is back iron, no good for the Pirates. And here comes Etchy and the Raiders. Kick over to Shania Mirtens. Mirtens is going to drive right hand and swing it around Georgia Gale. Gale with that one-handed bounce pass into McCoy. McCoy goes up with the right-hander, but she can't get the little baby sky to hook. Yeah, good-looking little sky hook there from Jaden McCoy. Just didn't fall. That's an offensive foul call against Kayla Jackson. Well taken from Leandra Etchi. Etchi established her position before Kaya Burnett even really got the ball on the floor and took a charge, but she went down kind of hard and she came up grimacing just a little bit as a substitution made. Albatrossi is going to come on and replace Jaden McCoy, who gets a little one-on-one -on -one coaching from Coach Walker on the sideline. Keep an eye on Etchy here. She still kind of got that face of pain after she hit the floor hard taking that charge. And that's something we've talked about, Jeff. You and I have talked about how these ladies have really worked the last couple of weeks to take as many offensive fouls as they can, but it does take a toll on your body to get hit in the chest and go straight back onto your back like that. As we just saw out of Leandra actually there's a jump all tied up underneath by CeCe Maya. Looks like that's going to come down here to the Pirates. Yeah, you're right. It does take a lot out on your body, the tailbone, the back, you name it. But if you do it just right, if you time it just right, Get a little bit of that acting in there. You can kind of set yourself up with a little push off and a little lighter, lighter fall if you can. But I love it. I love to see that. It's a long start in the game today, and I love that our ladies kind of emphasize that on the defensive end of the ball. Now the traveling turn to call this one on Sade Mobley. Mobley thought she had some room, but did not see CeCe Mayo waiting for it underneath, and so she ends up traveling. Here's a substitution. Anastasia Zakharova will check on and replace number 10, Shania Mirton. So now your three-point shooting lineup is out there between Etchi, Mayo, Gale, and Zakharova. Speaking of, there's Leandra Etchi. She lets fly, but draws the back of the iron no good. <laughs> that shot had absolutely no rotation. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've, I've noticed that a little bit with her lately, just coming straight from the hip. It's almost like she's pushing the ball rather than shooting it, but um, if she's knocking it down, more power to her, but right now it's just not looking very fluid. Zachary over inside the Mayo, Mayo over to Trossi, and Trossi's going to go up and under and draw the foul. Good secondary move from Ala Trossi, found herself trapped, kind of threw up the little pump fake, put the ball on the ground one time, went up and under, and she will take our first free throws of the afternoon. You might notice we've got some guests here tonight, Rob Brown. It looks like we've got the cheerleaders from uh, Baker Middle School and um, some young ladies and young men over here from Bruner Middle School over in Fort Walton Beach. Welcome to Raider Arena, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Trossie knocks it down the first free throw. Back half is up and good. Nothing but strings all the way through for Iowa Trossie. She's got five, uh, excuse me, six points on the evening. 
to get us started. From the Pirates back on the other end, again, a lot of off-ball movement, sets and screens. There's Georgia Gale out on defense against Anita Payne. Payne with the long-range jumper, front iron no good, and there's Etchie. She's yeah. got the speed to break away, and will go left-handed once again, and it's good. Once again, Leandra Etchie with another pair. Etchie's so explosive. It's going to be tough. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to be tough, like I said, for these Lady Pirates to keep up, especially in the transition game as we get out, and, and Etchie with her speed and her explosiveness gets down the floor for an easy breakaway layup. Kyra Burnett with another pair for the Pirates. 19-8 in favor of the Raiders. There's Zach Rova on the inside pass from CC Mayo. Well done on the assist. Yeah, great backdoor cut. Wide open to the basket. Great look from CC Mayo. Pinsville well State working the ball around the top of the three-point line. 46 seconds left to play in the first half as that player somehow goes in. Wow. Can't do nice. much against that. Kyle Burnett went inside, got fouled, and just kind of slung it up at the rim the best she could and somehow gets it to drop through the can. So Kyle Burnett with a pair and an opportunity to earn a third. Yeah, great job just absorbing the contact, hanging in the air for a moment, and with the last second, getting it up and knocking it down. Free throw is good. That's going to bring it back to within 10 for the Pirates. Like we mentioned, just two substitutes on the bench available for the Pirates this evening, but we really haven't seen too many substitutions out of the Raiders. Remember last week we talked about it, they were kind of almost doing that platoon substitution, two, three, four at a time, but this evening for the most part, outside of the recent addition to the game of Ariel Wilson, who's seen spot time off and on. We haven't seen a ton of substitutions for the Raiders so far. trossy has been on the floor most of the evening, as has Mayo. Zach Rova checked on a few minutes ago and is still playing. Yeah, sometimes you can substitute too often. And what that'll impact is your momentum. That'll impact what the young ladies on the floor have done, just kind of getting in a groove. Um, and then all of a sudden they're getting substituted for so I, I do realize a difference in that, allowing these young ladies to play a little bit longer, and maybe they recognize that as an issue from Wednesday night. I don't know, but you are correct. Not as many substitutions as we saw last time. Seems like Wednesday night we were seven out of four, five, four, five almost. Shania Mearns returns to the game, replacing Anastasia uh, Zakharova. Mentioned number 11, Ariel Wilson, the tallest player on the roster for the Raiders. She checks in. At 6'6", a freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And she, along with Alatrasi, will play the role of the Twin Towers on the block for the Raiders. Uh, you got to take that, Trossi. Oh, you thought that might fall as Alatrasi slings it up to try to beat the buzzer. It will not go back iron. So, after our first 10 minutes, it's a nine-point lead for the Northwest Florida State College Raiders. 21 to 12 so far. Alvatrossi has six points on the afternoon. And Jeff McDonald, from what we've seen so far for the most part, the Raiders have just kind of followed their game plan. Come out, work the ball into the post, let Trossi, McCoy, Ariel Wilson get down low, draw that defense in, then see if an Etchie is open, run into the glass, see if Georgia Gale's open for a three. Following the tempo, pretty good so far. Yeah, absolutely, and then once we, we that quarter continued on, we saw that Pensacola State College, the Lady Pirates, began to get fatigued already with limited substitutions over there. I think they got two subs on the bench, and our ladies are just getting up and down, etchy, getting out down the floor, two easy fast break layups, and it's going to be a problem as we continue through this game for the Lady Pirates to keep up and transition, and if we continue to get that press going, will have to contend with, but we've seen a full complement of players get run up and down the court and get tired by this Raiders squad. Lot of momentum, especially when they get 
into that back and forth transition game. We saw Leandra Etchie break away a couple of times. We've seen Shania Mertens working the ball all the, round, all the way around the top of the three-point line. So it's not like you get fatigued even with a full team, and the, the Pirates got to come in here with seven players and fight through that tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's our style of play. It's going to create issues for the Lady Pirates with a limited bench tonight. So that, that's going to be the issue as we continue on through the game. But it is nice when you've got some young ladies like Iowa Trossi and Jaden McCoy, you know, that can pound it inside and do some work and create some matchup problems. And then they open things up for Georgia Gale and, and the ladies out along the perimeter. CeCe Mayo, Miss Etchie over here. And uh, so well-rounded first quarter. 5 of 12 from the floor for the Pirates, 9 of 21 were the Raiders clearly winning the shots attempted category. There's CC May on the inbounds pass from Shania Mertens, takes it straight to the glass and gets the kiss. One of three from the three-point line, that one belongs to Georgia Gale. A pair of free throws attempted by Awa Trossi. She knocked down both of them, and that's where we stand so far beginning the second quarter. Long range three, no good and the Raiders rebound. Leandra Etchie brings the ball up the floor, resets the offense, and she stepped, was looking to the inside, thought she was gonna potentially find CeCe Mayo running to the glass, but a Pirate defender jumped in the passing lane and Etchie's momentum just carried that left foot forward. Travel called and a turnover. Just the first one on the evening for the Raiders. Yeah, been a pretty clean game so far. No fouls yet. Well, I'll take that back. We have had fouls. We're just not showing up on the scoreboard. But all in all, it has been limited in the foul department, limited in the turnover department. Good, clean game so far. Clean three-point look there is no good for Anita Payne. Etchie's got the board and comes back the other way. Etchie skips it across to Shania Mertens, and she knocks down the jumper from the corner. Shania Mertens back on the score sheet for the Raiders. Little jumper from short range is good. And again, that might be the most dangerous player, Zamaria Polk for the Pirates. She stands at 6'3 from Detroit, Michigan, and the biggest inside threat that the Pirates have. CeCe Mayo is going to drive right into the heart, kick it over to Mertens. Mertens for three, no good. Just over the top of the, uh, top of the iron. A little strong on that one from Mertens. Um, sometimes you have a little too much time to shoot. She was sitting there wide open, a lot of time to think about it, and just launched it. Sometimes that messes up your rhythm. And she gets her hand in the passing lane, gets back on defense, and the three-pointer is good from Kaya Burnett from two feet outside of the arc. She drills that one. Leandra Etchie brings the ball up the floor. She has no doubt been the leader of this team all year long, but she's in there with the majority of the starting lineup as Georgia Gale is just too strong from the corner. Yeah, good open look, though. Those are going to begin to fall for Georgia Gale, as we know. She gets heated up as the game goes on. Um, don't mind that shot at all. Two home games ago, Georgia Gale was really struggling from the three-point line. Then last week, she came in here and I believe knocked down her first three on her way to a 50%-ish shooting night from behind the arc, which you'll take out of Georgia Gale any night. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing that maybe we might want to consider is when we get back down to the other end of the floor on offense, if we don't get a bucket in transition or the opportunity to get into transition, would be to take advantage of uh, that shot clock and kind of wear these lady pilots out a little bit. First free throw is good for Kaya Burnett. Burnett's got 11 on the evening and leads all scores on the floor so far. A couple of substitutions checking in. Savannah Walker Leffler is on, as is Sade Mobley. Second free throw is good. Down to a six point ball game. Etchie to Mertens in the corner. Mertens up top to Trossi. Trossi's going to drive with the ball knocked out of her hands. Good defense from Kaya Burnett there to get a hand in, and it comes off of the left knee of Awa Trossi and a turnover to the Pirates. 
Yeah, right there. You may have noticed that Jaden McCoy kind of had her. She was behind her defender with her hand up looking for a lob pass. I'd really like to see Jaden just use that size, use that length, and go ahead and front her defender. Ask for the ball and do what she does on the inside. She's got some great moves on the inside, and I'd like to see her utilize those. Walker Ruffler misses the jumper, and Georgia, uh, Georgia Gale comes up with the rebound. Raiders reset. Trossi to Etchy. Etchy over to McCoy, but McCoy couldn't get a handle on it before it goes to the ground, and a jump ball is going to be called. Jaden McCoy went down to the ground to try to recover the pass from Leandra Etchy. Etchy had nothing but daylight between her and the glass, and that's one of those times, and we've talked about this a number of times, where the Raiders, you'd like to tell them, be a little more selfish. Take that shot. It's you and glass. Make it happen. Well, you know, it was actually a great idea, a great pass, but we say this all the time, is that we get inside when we're in the paint. We want to bounce pass. We've got arms stretched out across the paint. We need a bounce pass to get underneath that, and then easier for a girl like Jaden McCoy, Albatrossi, to handle that. You know, we know our post players typically don't have the best hands, right? Not to say that Jaden and, and Albert don't, but you want to give her a nice, easy bounce pass that she can catch and do something with it. That was a little too much mustard on that air pass through the paint. Leandra Etchie takes another charge down low, and it's another turnover. Jaden McCoy with the inside pass. And the kiss off the glass is back on the score sheet. And she's now taken two charges so far to start this game. And when you've got somebody creating turnovers by taking the ball away from the offense that way, that'll go a long way towards winning some basketball games as we've got a whistle off the ball. A foul is going to be called on Alatrossi. She is getting into it, and I would keep an eye on that matchup. Number 10 for Pensacola State, Zamaria Polk, and number 3, Awa Trossi. Keep an eye on 24, Jaden McCoy, if she gets in there with Polk as well. Polk likes to play physical basketball. She is 100% going to fight through screen. She is going to start putting that forearm right into chest and back and bellies, wherever she's got some space to do. As CeCe Mayo checks in and replaces Awa Trossi. Watch whoever gets set up against number 10, because she will fight with him down in the paint. Yeah, good hustle there by Etchy. Pass over to the corner, and the jumping out of control shot is no good. Quick pass up to Mirtens. Mirtens goes up with the right hand, fights through the defense, and gets a bucket. Yeah, great job by Etchy there, getting that outlet pass out down where Mirtens could do something with it. Spin move right into the waiting defense of CC Mayo, and the ball's going to get knocked off of Mayo's hand and go out of bounds. She's kind of got a look of wonderment, thinking that it reflected back into the hands of the Pirates shooter, but the officials say it'll stay on this end, eight point ball game. And another offensive foul called on the Pirates. That one is, and just like we were talking about, Zamaria Polk, Polk gets called with the offensive foul for throwing that elbow, and keep an eye on that, especially now considering that Zamaria Polk has her first foul of the night, but we've seen that this team is, uh, excuse me, these officials are willing to call these offensive fouls. That could put the Pirates into some trouble if Polk can't settle down in the paint. Yeah, because they're going to need both Polk and number 35, Savannah walker Laffer down there to try to help slow down Trossie and McCoy. Look at McCoy just taking it. Gale lost the ball into the hands of Anita Payne. Payne tried to turn away from Georgia Gale and waiting right there was Jaden McCoy to rip the ball away from her. Two quick turnovers. It ends up with McCoy, and she kisses it off the glass for a deuce. Yeah, just flexing on her right there. Big Rob just ripped it right out of her hands, turned around, left hand off the glass. Got to love it. Out to Walker. Laffler makes its way all the way back to the top of the key for the three-point effort from Sade Mobley, but it's no good. Raiders with the rebound. Mirtens over to Etchy. Etchy's going to reset the offense outside the three-point line to Mirtens. McCoy over to Georgia Gale in the corner. There Gale's going to set the three. No good. Off. Just touched too long. Jaden McCoy with the rebound and the nice little bounce pass to CC Mayo, who hits the five-foot jumper. Yeah, CC Mayo just sitting there waiting patiently in the middle of the paint, rewarded from a nice little bounce pass from Jaden McCoy. CC Mayo, Shania Merton's out playing tough defense. Skip over to the corner. 
And a reset from Anita Payne. 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Pirates. Baseline drive and a prayer gets thrown up. No good there, but a foul called. That was gonna be Saden Mobley on the jumper and the block is gonna be called underneath against Georgia, excuse me, against CC Mayo. Yeah, CC getting coached up right now. She just needs to move her feet. You know, instead of using her body, she just gotta move her feet, cut off that baseline, not use her body to push her towards the baseline, but use her feet to cut that baseline drive off and maybe have an opportunity for another charge. But I think that's probably what coach is telling her right now. And again, we've seen this out of the Raiders time and time again. They would like to score as quickly as they can in transition if that opportunity is available. If it's not, they're gonna pull folks outside of the three-point line. We just saw Jaden McCoy handling at the ball, and they're gonna try to work the ball to the inside. Lots of flashes, lots of screens around the top, and what we saw a minute ago was Jaden McCoy get open. They found her, she spins around, and who's waiting but CeCe Mayo right in the middle of the paint, wide open for that bounce pass. That's what the Raiders wanna do if the transition basket doesn't work. We've seen them settle down into offensive sets, Jeff McDonald, and that's good news for the Raiders. No, absolutely. We've seen them struggle in a half-court set. So tonight, though, they're looking much better when that transition bucket doesn't come and they get into the secondary break and then into the half-court set. They're doing a fantastic job working the ball around to the open receiver there or some, you know, willing recipient of an easy pass to make a short jumper. So they're doing a great job working it around. Great passing, great back cuts, great screens. That's a great motion offense tonight. 15 of 30 from the floor are the Raiders so far. Just one of six from behind the arc. Georgia Gale is one of three. Etchi Trossi and Marins have all attempted one so far as well. Just two free throw efforts so far. Alwa Trossi is two for two from the line. But winning the rebound game, 16 total boards for the Raiders to just nine for the Pirates. So winning the, uh, winning the statistics battle where it counts. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Great first half so far for the Lady Raiders. 14 point lead, and let's see if we can go ahead and bump that up a little bit. You know, we always talk about the last three minutes, three to five minutes of the first half, first three to five minutes of the second half, really go a long way of setting the tone for what's gonna happen the rest of the ball game. A couple of substitutions have been made for the Raiders side. We are gonna see step off number 10, Maria Polk, who has again got a couple of fouls for her name so far, but is really the big inside threat for the Lady Pirates, and with the second foul, she has made her way to the bench. On to come Savannah Walker Laffler, the other six footer on the roster. That free throw is good for Sade Mobley. Second free throw is no good off the mark, and Shania Mertens is gonna come out with the rebound. Mirtons ahead to Georgia Gale. Gale looking, will reset the offense back up to Mirtons. There's McCoy, McCoy over to Etchie. Etchie's looking to the right, trying to find McCoy on the inside against Walker left, over to go back up to Mirtons. Mirtons over to CC Mayo. Mayo's gonna step inside and threaten the drive, won't go. Look at that bounce pass, and a secondary pass to Jaden McCoy, who goes up left-handed, but is fouled by Savannah Walker. Leffler, great ball movement on the interior from the Raiders. Yeah, great little give and go there between Etchie and Mayo, and then Mayo with a great vision and look down to Jaden McCoy. McCoy headed to the strike for her first attempts this afternoon. First one is no good, hits the right side of the rim and comes out. Jay McCoy's second offering is good. Gets it to bounce and go in. And a substitution on coming. Gabriela Salos will check in. She'll replace Shania Mirtens. Her first action of the evening for number 22. Pick up the Pirates trailing by 14. Just over three minutes remaining in the first half. Quick inside pass to Savannah Walker Laffler, and she is fouled by Jaden McCoy. That's something I suspect we will likely see the Pirates try, see uh, see them try more often to get that battle underneath as Jaden McCoy can be a little over aggressive on defense. And considering their tallest players, Amaria Polk is now sitting on the bench with a couple of fouls. 
they like to try to even those odds on the interior as much as they can. Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you, Savannah Walker-Loffer has got a great presence down there in the post. Tough to check down there, and Jaden just came over a little bit there. That jumper good from Sade Mobley. You're not going to see very many women come into this gym and be able to compete size-wise with Jaden McCoy. I'm talking in terms of body mass and ability to push Jaden McCoy off the block, but Savannah walker Laffler is one of the few. No, absolutely. Like I said, she's got a strong presence down there inside the paint. Great shot off the glass by our girl, Jaden McCoy, Rob Brown. CC Mayo goes with the left hand, draws the defense, gives a little right-handed pass over to McCoy. McCoy decides instead of driving this time, as she has the last two, just to send up an offering, and it knocks off the glass. Great hustle there from Etchy to get in there and get in between the ball and her man and uh, create a turnover there. Andrew Etchy will lead the offense over to CC Mayo. Georgia Gill, Jaden McCoy, uh, Gabriella Sales all on the floor for the Raiders right now as well. Gale's going to drive to the middle, skip it over to Mayo. Mayo goes baseline, up and under with the right hand, and it's in. Beautiful move from CeCe the spark plug Mayo. Yeah, CeCe Mayo, she just does such a great job. She gets in there and has to kind of contort her body a little bit and always finds a way to get it up and off the glass and into the hoop. Speaking great. of Mayo, there steal. she goes again. The quick steal and the unopposed layup, it's good for number 34, CC Mayo. Bringing the heat after the substitution. The spark plug is there. Four field goals for CC already. Eight points on the board. We love watching her play, Jeff McDonald. Yeah, she reminds me, I'm going to go back a little bit, and this is probably a little bit before your time, too. Back when the Detroit Pistons were so bad, the bad boys of the NBA, and they had a guy on their squad back when they were beating up on Jordan and company named Vinny Johnson. They called him Vinny the Microwave Johnson because when they plugged him into the game, he heated things up. And that's exactly what CC Mayo does for this Lady Raiders basketball squad. I was going to say you're not that much older than me, but you are. <laughs> 133 left to play here in the first half. It's a 25-17 basketball game, as we mentioned. CC Mayo just a second ago. She has absolutely been a... Uh, been a spark plug for this team all year long and she continues to do that this evening we'll get that scoreboard back up for you here in just one moment but there we go oh. we got 40 to 22 here with a minute 33 <laughs> left in the second period 18 point ball game. It seemed like it wasn't that far apart just minutes ago, but courtesy of CC, there's Georgia Gale and crew up to Etchy. Great pass. Etchy's got room to work with the left Great hand and she pass. takes advantage. Georgia Gale up to Leandra Etchy, who hits it with the left hand. Didn't really have a lot of room to operate there, so to gain body control and knock that left hander again, well done by Leandra Etchy. Yeah, great touch on the pass. Let her just perfectly where she had room to catch it and kiss it off the glass with that left hand. 42-22, 56 seconds left to play. 10 on the shot clock for the Pirates. Nice little pump fake there, and the jumper is good. Good move from Kayla Jackson. Once again, quick transition down the floor. Basket won't go that time, though. But there's Gabriella Sales with the rebound over to the corner for Georgia Gale. Book it! Three points for Georgia Gale. You know it's never long before Georgia Gale is going to knock one down and start heating things up from beyond the perimeter. So excited to see that go down just before half. Shot clock's about two seconds ahead of the game clock. 16 on the shot clock. Pirates can't hold. Oh, and a block there. Oh, not... Happy with that call was Coach Walker or Leandra Etchy. They thought it was a clean block over in front of the bench, but Etchy is going to be called for the shooting foul. So Anita Payne will head to the strike with three her way. First offering is no good. Back iron and out as we'll have a substitution upcoming. 
That's the situation there, Robert. You got to be very careful. You want to get your hands up, prevent a clean look, but you cannot come in contact with hand, arm, or anything. Once upon a time, they used to say the hand was a part of the ball. That's not so much the case these days. Second free throw is good. She's got one more coming. Shania Mertens will replace Leandra Etchie for the final 12.7 seconds of basketball action. Last free throw is good. All strings brings it to a 19-point ball game. And here come the Lady Raiders with a chance to hold for the last shot with seven seconds left. Mertens is going to dribble into the middle. She passes it over to Sales. No good. Off the iron just barely for Gabriella Sales. The ball rebounded by the Pirates. And that's how we'll end the half. 45-26 is your halftime score. The Lady Raiders in firm control of this one so far. And Jeff McDonald, not a lot to complain about out of the Lady Raiders. Had a little bit of a flat start to begin the game, but came back from that, got a little momentum going. We've seen a lot of transition basketball out of them so far. Not much to complain about. No, not at all. Sharing the ball well, playing great defense, creating those fast break opportunities, leading to some easy buckets, and just seeing these ladies work together very well here tonight. Great first half. You know, a lot of it's going to continue to roll in the second half as we see these young ladies from uh, Pensacola State College continue to be fatigued. They're not getting back on defense in transition. We saw them open up with the full court press, uh, excuse me, full court press defense a number of times, but really since around the middle of the third quarter, the Pirates just have not been able to keep that intensity level up for the most part. And so what we've seen is the Lady Raiders really take advantage. When the Pirates turn their back to get back on defense, Leandra Etchie, Georgia Gale, CC Mayo, they just take on a streak down with the basketball. By the time the Pirates get set up in a half-court set, the Raiders are already looking at where they're going to take the basketball. So that hustle play and that high-intensity play out of the Lady Raiders so far has been the difference in this basketball game. Absolutely. And you add Mertens to that equation as well. That's just too much quickness, too much ability to get up and down creating those problems for the Lady Pirates here tonight. So it's going to be a lot of the same, I believe, in the second half. And it's great to see Georgia Gale knock down a three just before half and so she can get going and create more of an inside-outside game and uh, more, to, more of that to come, I believe, in the second half. Georgia Gale, two of four from the arc, but two of eight overall are the Lady Raiders. 20 of 37 from the floor, three of four from the stripe. They are winning the rebound battle with 17 boards, including five offensive so far, 9 of 21 from the floor of the Lady Pirates, 1 of 4 from behind the arc, and 7 of 10 from the line. Any adjustments you're looking to in the second half? As far as the Lady Raiders are concerned, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, if you're Pensacola State College, you got to do the best you can to try to take your time, utilize the shot clock, get it down, try to get the ball inside to, you know, number 10, Zamaria Polk, number 35, Savannah Walker, Leifler. Let them do some work in there. They're not really shooting the ball well from the perimeter. But let's try to run some clock and preserve some energy and then hustle back on defense, you know, because they're just, it is what it is. They're short in numbers. There's not a whole lot they can do about that. But they can try to slow the game down, and they can control that on the offensive end. The problem, though, I say they can control it. The Lady Raiders are doing a great job applying pressure on the defensive end of the ball. The Bill Parcells School of Coaching sometimes... It, it is, is what, what it, is. it is. That's exactly right. Yeah. We're going to take a real quick break. We'll come back just a few minutes before tip-off of the second half, run you through the rest of the first half stats, and let you know what we think will happen in the second half. My name is Rob Brown. Jeff McDonald's here on Color. R.J. Murdoch and the cast and crew of Emerald Coast TV bringing you all of the Raider basketball action all season long. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Thanks so much for joining us here on Emerald Coast TV. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College.
Nation. You can count on Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARater.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. You can count on Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARater.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARater.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. 
This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARaider.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARaider.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. A vacation you can count on. Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARaider.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. you can count on Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARaider.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today 
to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. Vacation you can count on. Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARater.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. Vacation, you can count on. Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This. And welcome back to Raider Arena, ladies and gentlemen, where we are just seconds away from tip-off of the second half of the Northwest Florida State College Lady Raider basketball team as they play host to Pensacola State College. The Pirates are in the building this evening. It was all Raiders in the first half, partially because of the numbers game, partially just because they've started to find themselves a little bit of an identity, a team that can absolutely take advantage of the fast break transition if you give it to them. But one that we've seen a lot of interior passes becoming more and more integral to this offense, Jeff McDonald. Look to see more of the same in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. Like we said there at the end of the first half, I don't see much changing. I don't want to see our game plan change because things are working. Don't want to move things around too much. Just keep doing what you're doing. And as we said at the end of the first half, it is what it is really for these uh, Lady Pirates from Pensacola State College. It's a little short-handed tonight and doing the best they can. 45-26 is your score as we get started with Landra Etchi and company bringing the ball down to our side of the court for the second half. Again, women's college basketball divided into four 10-minute quarters as opposed to the men who play two 10-minute, or excuse me, two 20-minute halves. Mirrors to Trossi. Good pass, good look. Trossi couldn't finish, but other than the non-finish, a nice inside pass over to Leanne, or excuse me, over to Ava Trossi as Jaden McCoy goes up over the back, is called for the foul, and the turnover. Yeah, great look in there by Mirrors. Just... Need to soften that touch up just a little bit inside from Trossi. Kaya Burnett will lead the Pirate offense. She'll just drive right to the rack, go off the glass, just burn straight through all five Lady Raider defenders on that possession. Yeah, a little breakdown on the defensive end there. Not much help defense present on that possession. Georgia Gale back up to Trossi, Trossi to McCoy. Hands it back off to Gale. Gale's going to go to the right. Looks like she might have gone to the glass. Drives baseline underneath to McCoy, and the right-hander off the glass. No good. McCoy couldn't find the touch from short range. Yeah, they're doing a great job feeding them, just having a hard time knocking that down in the first few possessions here in the second half. 
That little short range jumper is good from Savannah Walker Laffler. Her first points on the evening. And watch for her to play a little bit of a bigger role here in the second half as Jaden McCoy's counterpart down inside the paint. And these two girls will absolutely get very physical with each other. Georgia Gale goes for the long range three, but it comes off back iron no good. Another foul there. It looked like on Awa Trossi. He's going to be her third on the evening. Looks like CeCe Mayo checking in for Awa Trossi. Walker Laffler will come off as well. They'll put Kayla Jackson back onto the floor. Jackson's got a pair of points back in the first half. That was just one of those little cheap hustle fouls that, you know, you really didn't need it, but... You know, you're going after the ball, working hard, and unfortunately, they blow the whistle. Inside pass there, and that's another matchup you're wanna, gonna, gonna wanna keep an eye on as McCoy able to play some solid defense on Zamaria Polk, who mentioned her back in the first half. Polk and McCoy will get very physical with each other down inside the paint. Polk a little more aggressive than Walker Laffler is in terms of fighting for position down on, on, the, uh, on the block. There's McCoy guarded by Polk. Over to Georgia Gale for the short range jumper and it's good from the elbow. Georgia Gale with a deuce. Oh, one fluid motion there on that possession. Catches it and just straight up with a nice sweet little jumper. Great touch from Georgia Gale. Coming off of the screen there, she recognized that the defender was on her back and if she could get that ball off on a one-timer, it was likely to be good as Amaria Polk gets a little turnaround sky hook over Jaden McCoy for a pair. Yeah, that's kind of the key for these Pensacola State College Lady Pirates is get it down inside the 10 and 35 and let them work and slow this game down a little bit. Jay McCoy has two fouls so far, so don't be surprised if Zamaria Polk decides to go right after her. And you see that good defense there by Zamaria Park on Jada McCoy. So McCoy will come out and try to set a screen. Mirtens is going to go off to the right to Etchy. Two seconds on the shot clock. Etchy with the left-hander, and she gets it to go. Nice. Crossing the lane, goes over the defender with a left-handed hook. Yeah, that's not an easy shot with your momentum headed one way, and you putting that up with your offhand. Great shot. Polk goes up against McCoy, and that time gets nowhere. Jaden McCoy is going to be credited with the block on that one, and then a foul on the floor as CeCe Mayo was trying to break out. Yeah, it looks like CeCe Mayo got hit by a strong safety there from Pensacola State College. She got lit up, but she pops right back up. Here we go. Mirton's over to Gale. Gale's looking inside to McCoy. Polk's got good defense on Jaden McCoy, so nothing there. And Georgia Gale reverses it back to the top. And thrown away there is CC Mayo got tied up with Kayla Jackson. She was looking to streak down the lane, and Jackson caught her in the midsection with a bit of a hook there. No foul called, however, so a turnover from the Raiders. Yeah, good idea. Just got tripped up and wasn't there. Under six and a half remaining in the third quarter of play here at Raider Arena. Men's action coming up at 7.30. Jeff and I have the call for you there as well as the inside pass won't go for Zarina Walker, and she'll head to the strike for a couple. Yeah, so far they are doing a great job of taking their time on the offensive side of the ball, passing around, setting some screens, getting open, getting it down low, letting them work, get to the line, and they've got some nice easy shots from the block tonight in the second half. Walker down, uh, excuse me, knocks down the first of a pair. I am struggling tonight with the easy stuff, Jeff. <laughs> it's all right, We'll buddy. get there. Second free throw is no good off back iron. We got a lane violation called underneath on Ariel Wilson. So a gimme there from the Raiders is going to give Walker another chance at the second free throw. No good front iron there, but rebounded by Zamaria Polk, who goes up and is stuffed by Ariel Wilson. Throws it out to each Etchie, but Etchie can't hang on to it. And it's a second chance opportunity mm. for the Pirates, and they convert. Kaya Burnett 
Leandra Edgy couldn't hang on to the outside pass. It was knocked away by the Pirates. Given to the outside to Burnett. Burnett just got the quick, easy floater down the middle of the lane. Yeah, a little hope looking arising here from the uh, Lady Pirates from Pensacola State College, making this a little bit of a ball game here so far. Down 14. They were down as many as 22 earlier as Janiah Mertens can't get the little underneath scoop to go. So back the other way goes Burnett. It won't go. Ball's up for grabs, and it's etchy. Leandra Etchie, CeCe Mayo on the two-on-one, over to Mayo, and Mayo with the layup. Etchie forced Sade Mobley to commit to defending her from getting to the right side of the glass, and as soon as Mobley set her feet, Etchie just scooped it over to Mayo and got out of the way. Mayo went unobstructed to the basket. Well done from Leandra Etchie. Yeah, great work from those young ladies on the fast break. They worked so well together. We talked about both of those players and what they can do when they get into transition. And when Etchie and Mayo get a two-on-one like that, there's not many defenders in the Panhandle Conference that are going to be able to find a way to prevent Etchie and Mayo from beating them two-on-one. No, a great two-man game running that transition offense. It's a, they are absolutely hard to stop. Leandra Etchie, eight points on the night to go. How about this? Five rebounds for that young lady as well. CeCe Mayo as well, having herself a game. Ten points to go with a board and a couple of assists. One of the things I love about CeCe Mayo is she usually checks in as a sub. She's not a traditional starter for this team. She finds her way in six, seven, eight minutes deep in a ball game. But by the end of the third quarter, Jeff, she's almost always the lead scorer, or at least right up there towards the top. Yeah, certainly. There she is right now as far as who we've got on the floor at the moment. She's leading the scores on the floor with 10. And, um, you know, CeCe Mayo, she's one that we'll talk about at the end of this period. Um, one of our young ladies we're going to highlight tonight, let you get to know her a little bit. And um, But, yeah, you're absolutely right, Rob. She gets in there and makes an impact with the minutes that she gets. And as you can see right now, just looking at these stats, leading us with 10 points. Five and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter. 13 of 28 from the floor. The Pirates are one of four from deep and eight of 12 from the strike. 13 rebounds overall. Lady Raiders, 23 of 44 from the floor. Two of nine from behind the arc. Three of four from the strike. And lead the rebound battle, battle with 20. Nice little right-hand drive from Kaya Burnett was looking to the inside to see if she could find Zarina Walker for the quick pass underneath, but just overdoes it. And it's another turnover from the Pirates. That's going to be their 14th, just six turnovers for the Lady Raiders in this game so far. That's something we've talked about the last couple of games. That number can sometimes flare up on you. But doing a really good job controlling the basketball tonight, keeping possession. Yeah, doing a great job valuing every possession, taking care of the ball, making good passes, taking good shots. Credit to Georgia Gale right there. She just went up, threw up the floater. It ends up missing. She goes around the other side of the uh, rebound and just tips it away from the defensive player. CC May was able to jump all over it and get the rock back. So a second chance possession earned there by Georgia Gale. Here, Ramsey Ross with that suit jacket tonight. My man's looking good. <laughs> As the athletic director has been so integral in getting this arena turned into what it is, comes by with the uh, kind of the new age fashion that the old school suit, that Macklemore thrift shop suit. But I got to say, he's wearing the black tennis shoes with the suit, Jeff McDonald. Call me an old soul, man. But no, 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 no. I got to no. get my man some, some, some dress shoes. No, sir. Th those are dress shoes. Those are the Kohan Airs, the Nike, just like Coach DeMeo likes to wear. That's what those are. Look at them next time he comes across. You'll appreciate them. They're great for ball players. Like I said, you never know when a ball game might bust out and you got to have some traction. You, okay? young, you young people in your game. Us young folks. You, you just got to catch up. Clearly. You, you accused me the other day of dressing like a millennial. Maybe you're the one with the problem, Rob You were Brown. wearing skinny pants, Jeff. No, we no, all saw it. Those we all not saw it. skinny pants. We I, all saw it. No, I, I would never wear skinny pants. I was wearing straight-fitted pants, okay? If, if There's that's a difference. What, that's what you got to tell yourself to sleep at night, buddy. Save Mobley knocks down the first free throw after being fouled by Jaden McCoy. 
Second one is good as well. 51-37, just over four minutes left to play here in the third quarter. But you know, just about the time I kind of get in on that trend, Rob Brown, I hear that boot cuts are making a comeback. That's because everybody saw you in those pants and decided to get rid of that idea. <laughs> Ariel Wilson over to Georgia Gale. Wow. Gale looking for Mayo. She'll skip it all the way over to Etchy. Etchy's looking inside. Nobody there. Wilson for three. No good way on. But Georgia Gale there for the putback. That's for good pass. Ariel Wilson throwing it up at the three-point line, and Georgia Gale was there to catch it on the other side. That's when you scream, pass. <laughs> no, no, that was not a shot. Gail was wide open. I saw her coming. Great hustle by Gail to get to that one, though. Little left-handed scoop won't we go. go. Transition. And it's a quick break the other way. Ooh. There's Mittens with the travel. She <laughs> took three Euro steps on her way to the basket that time. If You'd get away with one of those, young lady, but that got a little <laughs> out of control. If this was maybe the WNBA or the NBA, maybe she gets that extra if step. If this was the NBA and you were James Harden, you might get away with that. James Harden gets a good five to six steps <laughs> on every shot. Jumper, layup, you name it. It's, it's amazing the amount of traveling that goes on these days at the next level or the highest level. Kaya Burnett throws one up at the glass over Ariel Wilson and gets it to go. CC Mayo looking to Georgia Gale on the inside. Gale had no room though, Swing so it. she gives it to Etchy. Etchy to Ariel Wilson for another three-point effort. Got it! All strings for number 11. Ariel Wilson doing her best Eric Vila impression from out there. Yes, from downtown. <laughs> See, she heard us making fun of her. She heard you Call, making fun of her. Calling it a pass, and then she just went ahead and decided to knock it down. Ariel Wilson said, I got range. That's one of those, you're like, no, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> the whole bench came up in celebration when that thing went through. Beautiful shot from Ariel Wilson, all strings. There's Georgia Gale over to Etchy. Etchy on the backside to Wilson. Oh, oh. Thought she might spot up for another one. Into the corner to CC Mayo. Mayo was looking for Etchy, but a foul is going to get called on the near side. Foul is going to be called on Kayla Jackson. That is Kayla's fourth foul. So she's now in a little bit of foul trouble. And we'll head to the bench. Mm. Thrown up by CeCe Mayo, and she rattles it home. Inside of two minutes left to play, and the Raiders are trying to build that lead back up to 20. It came down to as little as 12 just a few minutes ago. Quick inside pass to Zamaria Polk. She goes up with the left hand. It won't go. Second chance. Put back is good. That's going to be Zarina Walker, who got the rebound and went right back up in the midst of a duo of Raider defenders to earn a couple and a chance to earn three the old-fashioned way. Free throw is good. Bangs it home to Zarina Walker. Here comes Andrea Etchi, working with Mertens, Mayo, Wilson, and Georgia Gale all on the floor. It's the outside pass to Gale. She was trying to cut towards the basket, but the pass didn't get there, so they'll reset the offense. Here's Etchi over to Mertens. Mertens to Gale. Gale pulls the trigger and knocks it down from range. Georgia Gale with another three. Like they say, Rob Brown, hand down. Man down, great shot. Got to keep your hand in Georgia Gale's face the entire time. Coming up on one minute to play. Pirates working the ball around the three-point line. Thought about spotting up for the long-range three over into the corner. She does and cannot knock it down. Anita Payne. Payne went in strong against Leandra Etchie, trying to get that ball taken away from number two. And we've got a push foul called against Anita Payne. That's going to be Payne's first on the afternoon. Yeah, you're starting to see a little bit of frustration rising here amongst the Lady Pirates, which you can understand. They're fatigued. It's been a long game so far for them. 
down 16 right now, or I'm sorry, down 17 right now, and uh, probably just a little fatigued. They've been fighting hard, but it's just tough with these numbers. Georgia Gale goes to the rack, tries to get the right-hand scoop, but missed the glass and no good, so here we come back the other way for the Pirates. Gale right back on the hustle defense, but wow. straight to the rim goes Kaya Burnett. She walked right up to the glass. Yeah, got to do a better job on the help side defense on those. We've had a few of those here in the second half, but we just got to step up and stop the drive. Ten seconds left on the game clock here in the third quarter. As Landry Etchie takes the screen from Wilson over to Mayo. Mayo goes baseline, puts up the right-hander, won't go. Rebounded by Pensacola State. And that shot will not count if it goes. And so that's how we'll end the third period. 61-46, the Pirates made a decent little run there for a few minutes, brought that thing back down almost to single digits before Georgia Gale knocked down a big three. Ariel Wilson does as well, extended the lead back up to where it is now. But these Pirates are not going away, Jeffrey Donald. We thought that maybe the Lady Raiders would just outclass start to finish, but the Pirates are putting up a heck of a fight. Yeah, they are. They're continuing to fight, and that's one of the things. This is a bit of a rivalry game. It always has been. Pensacola State College and Northwest Florida State College just right down the road from one another, really. And uh, it's not a game that either side takes lightly, and they're going to fight to the bitter end. So, you know, tonight, as we do every week, and this week will be a, every ball game here that we get to call at, at home at Raider Arena. We get to highlight one of our young ladies, and uh, Wednesday night we highlighted Georgia Gale, and uh, we made a little mistake on the show jumping. We're not going to quit saying we, Jeff we, hey, I, You were involved. You were involved. I'm not going to own it completely, okay? So, but tonight we want to go ahead and highlight number 34, CC Mayo. She's a sophomore guard, currently averaging 12.6 points and 4.4 rebounds. We call her the microwave, or I call her the microwave because she comes into the game and kind of heats things up, gets things going. And uh, some of the questions they asked her, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? And hers was invincibility. Invincibility. Solid. I'll take it. Next is what is your favorite TV show? She said American Horror Story. Okay. All right. Go ahead, girl. Do you think? Not really my thing, but that's all right. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? Tuscaloosa? No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Roll tight. <laughs> Bora Bora. Bora Bora. Bora. I'm with you, CC. I'm with you. Do you have any hidden talents? And I love this one. I respect this one. She can beat box. I think we're going to have to maybe during the men's game get her over here for a second and let her display that for we'll us. We'll let then. her do our outro music on the way out. There tonight. you go, buddy. And then lastly, what is your favorite sports memory reaching the career high and scoring at her high school very nice that's a big accomplishment man just a little something for you to know about cc mayo maybe we can get her over here and let her beatbox a little bit for us in a little while 17 to 35 from the floor are the lady pirates are one of five from deep and 11 of 15 from the stripe the lady raiders 27 of 52 from the floor after the turnover there 4 of 12 from the arc. Three of those belong to Georgia Gale, who's shooting right at 50%, 3 of 6. And they are three of only four efforts from the charity stripe tonight. Are the Raiders also winning the rebound battle? 24 boards, including seven offensive, to just 16 for the Lady Pirates. And that's where we stand statistically as we have the fourth quarter underway. Yeah, so far, great game from the Lady Raiders. Jaden McCoy with the left-handed scoop. If you can't go over Zamaria Polk, Go around her. Good left-handed scoop from number 24. Yeah, absolutely great move. I love the skill she has down there inside the paint. Lady Pirates working the ball around the perimeter. They will try to probe that defense and find some openings to drive to the lane. There you saw the inside pass and good hustle defense there. That's a travel call. That was a good effort there underneath from Zarina Walker, but she had Jaden McCoy and Shania, uh, Shania Mirtons and Ariel Wilson all kind of pawing at the basketball and just lost her body positioning on the floor. Yeah, she was covered up quick. Great defense by the Lady Raiders. Here's Mirtons running the point. Etchy up with her in the backcourt, along with Georgia Gale. Jaden McCoy and Ariel Wilson in the front court for the Lady Raiders. See the two of them working up near the top key. No white shirts in the perimeter, or excuse me, in the paint. 
There's Etchy, thought about spotting up for the three. She'll skip it over to Mirtens with five on the shot clock. Mirtens with the little right-handed leaner, but it won't go, and the hustle play there is gonna cause a jump ball. Leandra Etchy came around the outside and got the ball wrapped up. Good hustle play from Leandra Etchy to get in there. Yeah, Etchy's not one I would want to be battling with very often. She is tough and could be bad news for anybody that wants to come up and test her on a jump ball. There's Etchy over to Georgia Gale in the corner. Gale back over to Etchy. Etchy to McCoy at the free throw line. She kicks it over to Shania Mirtens, goes to set the pick. Mirtens comes off the pick, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Inside to McCoy, and McCoy is going to get pushed by Zamaria Polk. That's actually, to be honest, one of the weaker physical fouls we've seen called underneath on Zamaria Polk so far this evening. That is going to be Polk's third foul of the evening, and now they do have to keep an eye on number 10. With eight and a half, just barely under eight and a half left to play in the game. Yeah, you notice Trossi hasn't been back in the game very much since she picked up her third. Uh, maybe look for her to check back in here shortly. Great take by Mirtens. Shania Mirtens is going to head to the stripe. And a substitution being made as Leandra Etchy comes off the floor. And I believe that is the first time that Etchy has checked out of this game. But Leandra Etchy played the full full 30 heading into the fourth quarter. Yeah, that young lady's got a motor that just won't quit. Tenacious. Absolutely. As Coach Bobby Bowden used to say, tenacious. She's got tenacity. Tenacity. Just over eight minutes left to play. Pirates are now down 20. They had it down to around a dozen points just a few minutes ago, but the Lady Raiders have settled down. Now back in that 2-3 defense, Gabriela Sales, the Brazilian, alongside Georgia Gale up on the top of that 2-3 defense. There's a running jumper that won't go. Yeah, the Lady Pirates haven't really been much of a threat from the perimeter tonight. Great idea to drop back into that 2-3 and force them to make some shots that they haven't been able to put down tonight. Jordan McC Jade McCoy just fighting underneath and can't get either layup to go, but gets on the floor and wins another opportunity for her squad. And a fresh shot clock to boot. 24 seconds. Shania Mirton, she's going to kick it over to Ariel Wilson. Wilson's going to give it to McCoy for the jumper from the free throw line extended. You saw her hold the hand up for just a second there. Couldn't get the layup to go, so I'll do it with a little range behind me. She had that feel. She had that feel. She was reaching into the cookie jar. That's what we call it, that follow through. Get the cookies. Inside jumper blocked. Oh, and a foul called late from this far side official. Jaden thought she had all ball, and most of the gym agreed with her. Yeah, not so sure about that one. Looked pretty clean to me from our vantage point here. Speaking of Awatrasi, she is at the scorer's table, ready to check in for the first action of the fourth quarter for number three. And that first free throw is good for Sade Mobley. So Trossi will check in for Jaden McCoy, receives an ovation from the crowd for the hard work she's put in for the first three minutes of this quarter. Second free throw is nothing but strings for Sade Mobley. And a timeout called with 6.55 left to play in the basketball game. The Raiders hanging on to that 20-point lead. It's gone up and down a few times in the past 20 minutes or so of action, but stretched back out to 20 now on the behalf of some good interior movement from the Lady Raiders. We saw in the first half, Jack McDonald, they lived and died by the transition baskets, but since then, they've kind of started to work that inside game. We've seen Jaden McCoy get the ball a few times at the free throw line extended. Ariel Wilson has really worked well as a distributor up near the free throw line. The Lady Raiders really kind of taking their time and trying to up the high percentage shots. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good time to do that. Just kind of slow things down, you know, work around, get everybody involved, and get this one. 
the triple zeros on the, on the uh, clock there and go home with another great conference win. Get us some good momentum going into our next ball game on the 13th against Gulf Coast State College, who, uh, you know, obviously we lost to back on the 26th of January, 63 to 58. Be a good opportunity for us here tonight, again, just to kind of find that momentum, kind of get our groove going and get us ready for that ball game. That's going to be important for us as we're sitting there pretty close there at the top of the Panhandle Conference standings. Northwest Florida State College, the Lady Raiders, 6 and 2 in conference, 20 and 2 overall. We talked about that two game losing streak. One of those games was to Gulf Coast College, and unfortunately, it was here at home. Well, Gulf Coast is now second in the conference, also 6 and 2, 18 and 3 overall. So now, Gulf Coast College will host the Lady Raiders coming up in just a few days, and the Lady Raiders will need to win that one on the road if they want to win the Panhandle Conference. We'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end of this game. Speaking of, and just something to preview, if the men's team wins this evening, they will lock up the Panhandle Conference. So tonight's a big night for the men's squad against Pensacola State College. We'll give you more of that when we get towards the 7.30 mark and the tip-off of the men's game. 17 to 37 from the floor are the Lady Pirates. 30 of 58 are the Lady Raiders. One of five from Trey Land are the Pirates for 12 of the Raiders, and just five free throw attempts for the Raiders tonight. They've knocked down four of those so far. Ariel Wilson is in the front court for the Raiders along with Alba Trossi. There you see Trossi with that spin move and the right-handed jumper book. There it is. That little spin move has kind of become a signature of hers this year, and the thing about it is when she comes off of that spin move, Jeff McDonald, she's very good at maintaining momentum. So she, when come, if she comes out of the spin and she sees a defender, she's ready to pass the ball as much as she is to go up and shoot it. Yeah, good to see her kind of get back on track here tonight, making some nice shots inside the paint as she struggled here on Wednesday night, but good to see her get back in the flow. Three-pointer is good. Knocked down from Anita Payne. Long-range three. Just a second three-pointer of the night for the Pirates. Landra Etchie back in the game. She got about a three-minute spell and now will <laughs> return to the floor. I don't think she'll complain that much. No. Number two set in the offense. There's Alwa Trossi. Ariel Wilson cut into the basket, nothing there. A whistle comes from the backside official, and we're going to have a floor foul called. So much movement here on this offensive end of the, of the ball for the Lady Raiders. I love it. You don't get an opportunity to rest if you're on the defensive side here. Constant movement, great motion offense, and these ladies work so well together within this offense, especially here tonight. We've struggled a little bit in the half court in a few ball games, and but tonight, kind of clicking on all cylinders, doing a great job looking for one another. Etchy inbounds to Trossi, and Trossi could not knock down the short range, rebounded by the Pirates, but they miss on the other end. So here comes Etchy and the Raiders once again. Andrew Etchy, Shania Mirtens, Alva Trossi, Georgia Gale, Ariel Wilson all on the floor. Wilson getting the most playing time in a single game that we've seen so far this season. Knocked down that big three earlier in the third quarter as Trossi is double teamed there and throws the ball over to Georgia Gale but was knocked around a little bit and the foot slid so a traveling call against number three. Yeah, I got a little off balance looking to pass it back inside in the middle there and just kind of lost her balance and picked up that right pivot foot. Unfortunate turnover. So a timeout call with just under five minutes remaining to play. I want to remind you that coming up at the end of November, the 22nd and 23rd, we've got ourselves a big basketball tournament right here, the Emerald Coast Classic coming up. And this year we are going to be treated to four teams that are all tournament quality teams. Florida State, Tennessee, Purdue, VCU, all coming here to Northwest Florida State College Raider Arena to play what I think is going to be one of the better early season tournaments in all of college basketball, Jeff McDonald. Hopefully, you and I will find a way to weasel ourselves into some involvement to sit courtside because we got four teams that are going to be out here well, likely coming off of tournament appearances. Absolutely. I was fortunate enough this past season to serve as a PA announcer for that tournament. I'll probably be, hopefully be doing that again. It was a great time. Great tournament. They really just do a fantastic job getting very talented squads in here. Eight teams total. Four big-time teams. Four of our kind of smaller schools that are being here still Division One 
but uh, just a fantastic tournament. I really enjoyed it. Great crowds. Hopefully this year we'll see even more people come out and support. Um, I love what they're doing here at Northwest Florida State College. A.D. Ramsey Ross really doing a great job of opening this facility up to some great events, some great opportunities. Um, also, we had a fantastic high school basketball tournament here during the holidays. Um, amazing talent. You know, you had the Ball family in the house, Spire Institute. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, teams from all over the country, some of the top-rated teams in the United States were here playing in that high school tournament. And then, of course, you know, in July, they allow us to host our Hoops for Hope ball game here that we do through my nonprofit, Impact Emerald Coast, where we support local families that have children battling cancer. And uh, again, I just can't say enough about the work that they're doing here and how they're leveraging this beautiful facility, really a, the, the class facility of junior college basketball. I don't know that you will find one better than this. Under five minutes left to play here in the basketball game, and it is a 19-point lead for the Lady Raiders. It's kind of hovered around that 20-point mark for the past handful of minutes of action. Pass up to the top to reset the offense, and it's a drive to the rack that Ends up in a turnover to Leandra Eschi. Yeah, Never good hands there by with the effort. Looked like Georgia Gale slipped a hand in there and knocked that one loose. That pass just a little too high for Jaden McCoy. It was a good look, good opportunity. Jeff McDonald hasn't been told this yet, but we're going to be sending Jeff over to the bench for some uh, for some interviews throughout the remainder of the evening. We've got R.J. Murdoch brought up the handheld mic tonight, so Jeff gets to do double duty as color commenter and sideline reporter. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, indeed. Hey, thanks for the heads up. Yeah, man. Appreciate y'all letting me know that. <laughs> as many loops as we throw RJ for every week, we decided to flip the script on you just a little bit. Listen, I can't brag on RJ enough. I know you're going to continue to call the game here, but, you know, RJ and his crew, they do such a great job. And, you know, RJ has been involved with, you know, helping get local athletics out there on television, you know, through Emerald Coast TV and streaming online where people outside of the area can watch. Or even if you're at home and can't make it out to the ball game, that you have the ability to watch. It's quality broadcast. And uh, I know we're very fortunate to have someone like RJ Murdoch and Emerald Coast TV um, here in uh, Northwest Florida. Awatrasi rocks the entire defense to sleep and goes up with a left-hander. Three and a half left to play. Of course, broadcasting internationally. Hello to Miss Lorraine Gale, Georgia Gale's mom, that Jeff insulted by not knowing <laughs> what show jumping was during the last minute. home game. Wait a minute. You know, we, we brag a lot on Georgia Gale, you know. <laughs> so I think I think we're safe. We're safe. And uh, But she came over here, like you said earlier, pregame when we were talking to Georgia, and it was one of the coaches, that was Zach over there, who uh, was giving us a heads up and, Man, I'm just excited that they're watching, man. I really am. And, uh, you know, we love the feedback. You know, if you've got good feedback for us, we'll take it. If it's negative, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Drive to the inside, and Awatrasi got a hand on it, but it still found its way into the hands of Savannah walker Laffler, who knocks down the point-blank range layup. Good defense from the Raiders. Sometimes the ball just ends up where you don't want it to. Andrew Etchy over to Jaden McCoy. Inside to Awatrasi. Look at Jaden McCoy playing the role of distributor from the three-point line. Great look. And these young ladies always moving, flashing to the basket. I love it. Nobody standing around. Georgia Gale locked on on defense against Kaya Burnett. Burnett's going to drive into the middle and put up the right-hander, but it won't go. Rebound by Leandra Etchy. And Etchy fights out through a pair of defenders and is fouled on the way we talk about the tenacity of Leandra Eschi she just went in there amongst the two tallest pirate players Savannah Walker Leffler and Zamaria Pope stole the ball from both of them and got out of trouble oh she's right now leading the team in rebounds from in the, double digits by the way from the point guard position two more points and she's got a double double on the night so great game so far tonight for Eschi also, I would like to point out that uh, two more points, she's on a triple-double because she's got 10 assists to go to her name as well. Oh, she's got 10 assists? Okay. Yep. Yeah, triple-double. We need one more bucket for Miss Etchy to nail down the triple-double. 
you know, Rob, today's been a good day. Today has been a good day. Leandra Etchie messing around. Flirting with the triple-double. Yeah. I mean, two and a half minutes left to play. Plenty of time left to go. I don't know if you picked up on that. I, did not, I ignore you most of the time. That's great. A little ice cube. Oh, you went with a Friday reference. It's not a Friday reference. It's what? ice cube. Today was a good oh, day. Oh, you're okay. Messed gotcha. around, got a triple-double. <laughs> wow. Wow. I told her, Joe, I'm older than you are. You're younger. <laughs> younger. But everybody knows that song. Back iron no good for all with Trossi. Somebody's the Pirates, grandfather they put the knows hustle that song. At this point. Oh. And a blocking foul caught against Alasia Shearer. She's just checked into the game for the first time this afternoon and immediately hit with a blocking foul. She is, uh, I don't know if you can see the facial expression there on camera, but not thrilled with that call, nor was the coaching staff of the Lady Raiders who all came off, off the bench in protest. Yeah, it looked like she had a feet set. looked like it could have possibly just as easily been a charge as it was a block. Second free throw is good. Couple of substitutions. Alasia Shearer is in. Anastasia Zakharova is in. Gabriela Sales is in as well. Leandra Etchi will stay on as will Awatrasi for the final two minutes of play. Shearer gets it over to Etchi and Etchi is fouled hard on her way up to the basket. Nope, gonna call that a jump ball it looks like. So a block for the Pirates, jump ball. No, it's not. It's a floor <laughs> foul. How is that a floor foul? I, I do not know. I assumed, oh, Amastasia Zakharova just went up with a scoop right-hander in the midst of a lane full of traffic. I assume that was a floor foul because they did not send Etchy to the line. I just assumed it was a jump ball, but then they called it a floor foul, but she was clearly in the process of shooting. I've only been doing this for 30 years. I'll figure <laughs> this game out eventually, I guess. There's Anastasia Zakharova knocks down the first free throw, nothing but strengths. 30 years of hoops, huh? Well, I didn't start till I was three. <laughs> you know, it's here's the thing. We if we played the game, we're Loose never going to be it. fans. <laughs> right. Never going to be a huge fan of the Zebras. I just never have. And it's funny, I pull up here tonight, sit down here at the table, and I've got behind us a former referee here in, in the area who called my games when I was in high school. You'll notice Jeff's criticism has had low volume tonight. <laughs> no, great guy. He's actually now a youth minister. He brought his whole youth group here tonight. Got about 80 kids here. It's amazing. So um, it's proof that even a referee can turn their life around <laughs> and do good work. So anyway, anyways. Minute and a half left to play here at Raider Arena. It's over to Etchy. And she's going to go get it. Can't get it to fall. No foul called. Great but follow. Trossi there for the follow-up. That's 13 and points now for Trossi. Great comeback ball game for her. And there's an offensive foul called. So that time it is going to be called and we will come back the other way. That one's going to be on Savannah walker Laffler. That is her fourth foul with a minute 12 left to play. And this is kind of one of those times, Jeff, we talked about it the other night with the men's team when they were looking at getting to the century mark. Sometimes it's hard not to be a fan to openly root a little bit. I think we're all kind of hoping that Leandra Eshi finds those last two points before the clock hits triple zeros. Inside pass to Shear. There it is. Over to Dahl, oh, the foul. No, the travel is called. DeAndre Etchie was wide open to get the last two, and Shearer could not control the right foot before throwing the bounce pass over. So inside of 56 seconds left on the clock here. Oh. 50 seconds left to play. That shot is no good and taken out of bounds and thrown back off of the hip of Alatrossi. So the Pirates will get a fresh shot clock. 47 seconds left on the clock, 30 on the shot clock. Long range three is no good. It's on the ground, loose ball, and jump ball called, pointing towards that end of the floor. So it's a jump ball, and the Pirates will retain possession and another fresh shot clock. 41.5 left on the game clock. 
We'll call this one for you radio style and get the score and the video back up for you here in just a moment. Pirates are inbounding underneath, kick it out to the three-point line, and an offensive foul called underneath. That one is going to go against it. Appeared to be Saden Mobley when they were trying to get the ball on the inside. Mobley threw a little forearm right into the gut of Anastasia Zakharova. Zakharova reacted violently and ends up drawing the foul. That's going to be on Savannah Walker Laffler. We'll ultimately get the call, and Walker Laffler is fouled out. That is her fifth. Gabriella Sales with the basketball. She's going to go all the way to the glass, but pull it back out to reset. Over to Anastasia Zakharova. Zakharova to Trossi. 26 seconds on the game clock. Trossi to Zakharova. Looking inside for Etchy. Etchy is begging for the ball. The little spin move, and a foul is going to be called on the far side by the official. That one's going to be called against Kaya Burnett. It's like, you know it. They know that she <laughs> needs two points. They're working hard to try to get her the ball. So. They really kind of designed that edge. She came off of the screen and flashed out of the basket, and I haven't seen her eyes that wide all game long. She was looking for that deuce. Alatrasi tried to get it to her, but was fouled beforehand, so trossi has got an opportunity to earn the two. First one is good, 19.2 showing on the clock. You know, it's one of those things, that since we've been calling the games here this season for both the men and the women, I haven't seen a triple-double yet. Maybe a few double-doubles, but it is kind of a big deal. So hopefully she can get the two points, but even if she doesn't, I know she'll walk away happy because her team gets the W tonight. 15 seconds on the shot, or excuse me, on the clock. Shot clock turned off, and it looks like the Lady Pirates are content to just let the final nine seconds wind off the clock, and that is going to do it. 81-55, your final score. The Lady Raiders have given themselves a little bit of breathing room in the Panhandle Conference. Not much. They improved to 7-2. and two. We'll wait on the result of Gulf Coast State College's game. Assuming a victory for Gulf Coast State College, we're going to have ourselves a showdown on the 13th of February when the Raiders travel to Gulf Coast Community College and have a head-to-head -head matchup. They will have one Panhandle Conference game remaining, excuse me, two remaining, as they've got Chipola back here on February 16th. We'll have that call for you. And they will finish up on the road, excuse me, at home. Uh, no, on the road at Tallahassee on the 20th of February. And that game, of course, will be the f uh, finale for Panhandle Conference play. So top to bottom, a really good game overall for the, uh, for the Lady Raiders. We are sending Jeff McDonald over to the sideline to see if he can get us some exclusive sideline interviews. He'll try to grab a couple of coaches and players over off the bench. I don't think we turned Jeff's microphone on. Now we'll get uh, we'll get some audio from Jeff here in just a minute. The difference tonight. I think they've gotten a little more focused. You know, obviously there's a, a lot of stake, and uh, we wanted to protect our house tonight. I thought we had a couple of good days of preparation. Uh, you know, we did have a couple of bonehead plays, but, you know, I was happy with our effort, and we, we did a lot of good things. Yeah, we noticed that Etchie was two points shy of a triple-double tonight. Looks like they tried really hard to get a field there at the end, just fell a little short. Yeah, I think that's what we were trying to do. I didn't even realize it. I never paid attention, but the coaches started talking about it on the, on the bench, and if, we probably should have made it more of a concerted effort to do that. But, hey, we played a win, not just put up fast. Absolutely, and I doubt she's upset about that. She's a winner. Great game tonight, Coach. Look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Here's my man Jeff McDonald alongside Coach Bart Walker for that post-game interview. And thanks to Coach Walker for spending a few minutes with us. As Jeff mentioned there just a second ago, Leandra Etchy just two points shy of the triple-double, something we've not seen this season, at least at home here in Raider Arena. Coach said they were they were working on it there at the end, trying to get at you those last two points. But uh, as Coach said, look, Jeff, you play for the win, not to pad the stat sheet. That being said, it's kind of fun to pad the stat sheet a little bit in games like this. Oh, absolutely. And we, you and I both know that, you know, that's not the type of ball player that Etchy is. She's very unselfish, very much about the team. And uh, But it, like he said, it would have been nice if, if, had they known or had he realized they would have made a concerted effort to, to get her that bucket. But I think that 
her teammates knew, and that's all that mattered, and they tried, but at the end of the day, they got the big win, and they're really in a good spot here um, down this home stretch. So. 19 of 45 from the floor went the Pirates, 2 of 8 from behind the arc, and 15 of 19 from the stripe. Really the only portions of the game that they lost were the production from the field, obviously, and the rebounding game. Out-rebounded by the Lady Raiders, 35 to 19. Lady Raiders, 34 of 65 from the floor, including 4 of 12 from behind the stripe. Nine of just 11 free throw efforts on the night, but we mentioned the one stat that we wanted to see kept down the last few games is the turnover number. We've seen it threaten to get to 20 a few times tonight. Just 10 turnovers all game long for the Lady Raiders. So the few things we've talked about the last few weeks, don't let the emotions go downward. Ride that momentum. Keep those fast breaks up and keep the turnovers down. They did everything we asked them to do tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Everything that we've been talking about, the struggles that we've seen happen here when we call these games on Saturday nights, last Wednesday night, and uh, we avoided those traps here tonight. So I feel really good about where they are right now going into the home stretch of conference play. Like you said, we've got two more ball games and actually stretch at three ball games left to go in conference and uh, finish strong, get ready for the state tournament. All right, we're going to take a real quick break. We're about 15 minutes away from the starting lineups of the men's team as the Northwest Florida State College Raiders welcome the Pensacola State College Pirates here to Raider Arena. My name is Rob Brown. Jeff McDonald is your color commenter. R.J. Murdoch and the cast and crew of Emerald Coast TV bringing you all of the Raider basketball action live from Niceville, Florida. We'll take a real quick break. We'll bring it back here to Raider Arena, get you set for the men's tip. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Rob Brown. You're watching Raider basketball here on Emerald Coast TV.